Unlocking Your World of Creativity with best-selling author and brand innovator, Mark Stinson. Mark introduces you to some of the world's leading creative talent from publishing, film, music, restaurants, medical research, and more. You'll discover how to tap into your most original thinking, how to organize your ideas, and most of all, how to make the connections and create the opportunities to launch your creative work. Unlocking your world of creativity. Well, welcome back, friends, to our podcast, Unlocking Your World of Creativity. And today we're stamping our creative passport in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And my guest is Mark Ryle. Mark, so glad to have you. Thank you very much, Mark. And I'm, I'm thrilled to be on your show. We're going to be talking about Mark's book. It's called Age Decoded. I love the fact that it's called a speculative fiction. Is it fiction or is it a prediction of the future? <laughs> I think this is the pursuit Mark is all about. Well, <laughs> Mark, tell us about this pursuit of understanding this genetic engineering. and Sure. And just to uh, join to what you were saying there, it is fiction and it is a prediction of the future, though. It's both. Well, it's both. In science fiction, they sometimes will call that speculative fiction or hard science fiction. Uh, um, I like that. I got into this in a strange way. Never thought of myself as a creative person. I would thought you were crazy if you had said to me 20 years ago that I'd be doing a podcast and talking about a book I wrote or anything. Or if I had written something, it would have been nonfiction. It would not have been fiction. So crazy things happen. And I one message to your so your listeners would be don't pigeonhole yourself you just never know life changes you can change opportunities come up stuff happens maybe stuff uh, percolates inside you for a while and then uh, emerges at the right time so you just never know yeah by background mark taught economics and mathematics at royal saint george's college in toronto and also at heelfield strathallen college in hamilton mark is this sort of academic and very left brain orientation, the reason you didn't think you were a creative writer? Right. So coming out of high school, I was slated as a um, math and science guy all around. I was, I was very strong in those areas. They came naturally to me. But in university, I twice changed programs. I, I, there's something in the back of my mind told me that I really didn't want to be a hard scientist. So I, they were tough decisions, but that was sort of the first inkling that maybe I needed something a little more humanistic, maybe a little less exact. I withdrew out from engineering, even though I was, I was actually the top student at University of Waterloo. I withdrew from the program. Uh, that was a very tough decision. My parents, all my friends were like, Mark, what are you doing? You're, you're, mm -hmm. That's your stuff. That's your shtick, right? And so I, I, I just, something in the back of me just said, it's not the true me. And then I also switched out of a master's in science. Now, eventually I did continue my education, but it was in other areas. I ended up with a PhD in education and I did a master in business just to learn about the business world. But those are moves out of the exact into the inexact, more humanistic, dealing with people instead of things so much. Well, and then the subject of the book, Age Decoded, is this genetic engineering, as you call it, CRISPR-like technology. Did you want to learn more about the technology first, or did you say, hey, I want to write a you know, speculative fiction book and see where it takes me? It started with wanting to learn more about something. And that's another thing I'd say to people listening is it's really cool if you can have a, an earnest interest in something, something maybe completely new. I knew nothing about genetics. It's not my area. So, but I poured myself into that because I was intrigued by all the research going on. I'm an athlete and I'm, I do triathlons and I'm a very serious competitor. I represented Canada on the world championships. When I found out that I and all my competitors are getting older, I thought, let's look into it and let's see if there's, you know, if there's any science about this, maybe things you can do. And it turned out, no, there's not much you can do. I'm getting older and we're all getting, <laughs> and I'm getting slower. Yeah. The clock keeps ticking Meta metaphysically little, and physically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On the swimming front, I was getting faster just because I'm such a terrible swimmer. So I was still gaining some skill and right? taking some lessons, but on the running and the biking, I was slowing down. And a lot of my competitors who were maybe a little bit older, like I was in the 60 to 65 age group who you compete in the sort of five-year brackets. Uh, they would say uh, to the younger ones, so the 64-year-old would say to a 60-year-old, you know, you have such an advantage. You're four years younger. And I, and I was like so uh, intrigued by how they could feel that four years. And, and you know, isn't all the, aren't they all in just 
almost in their 60s. No, one guy's four years older and, he, and he's declining. He's felt that decline. So I was intrigued by this and I came across some research and, and it really opened my eyes. It sort of leveled me. And I thought, well, there's some very, very good scientists looking into who see aging as a disease and they want to eradicate it. And I don't necessarily agree with that, but they do. That's their philosophy. And so they're driven to eradicate aging and all a lot of the associated diseases too that come with that. And I thought, well, for triathlon, that would be sort of cool. Maybe you could, uh, you know, stop this aging, maybe even go backwards if they can reverse it. That would be really interesting. But what about for our world? What about for humanity? That's the bigger picture. So right at that point where I realized there's stuff going on here, I thought, you know what, let's start writing some of this down and crafting some stuff. And it was a little bit of a science experiment, but I, it was, I wrote it through characters, through fiction. Very interesting. And so you initially said, hey, this could impact maybe me, my athlete friends and so forth. But then you really started looking at the potential impact on humanity, on society. Yes. And then it, it broadened from there too, because not just the impact on aging, which is one of the genetic area research is what well, you mentioned, CRISPR, but the impact of CRISPR and genetic engineering on anything with humans, mm. the fundamental essence of humans, not just nurturing humans anymore, but literally changing the human nature of people, of humans and other life forms. That's crossing a divide that humanity has never has never penetrated. That's that's a completely new frontier. And the subhead of the book hints at that that they are changing us. Yes, exactly. So they 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 stopped aging, but imperiled humanity. So there are there are like with any technology, there's going to be stuff you have to watch out for, things that could be uh, could go wrong or unintended consequences, even or even unintended bad <laughs> or even intended sorry <laughs> bad consequences. So in my book, there's uh, one intended negative consequence, which is a psychological effect on people. So that most people go in and get age decoded, which means they stop their aging. And even eventually two centuries further in the book, reverse aging is uh, brought in. And a lot of people go for that, especially the ones who are stuck at an old age and not getting any older. They want to reverse age, right? But at the same time, though, unbeknownst to these people, there is a one other manipulation that's going on, a genetic manipulation. And genetic manipulations can have psychological effects, too. So it's on, it's on that side. It's on the psychological side. Tell us more about that. I mean, I think we, we can appreciate the physical aging part. But what, what about the psychological part? So the psychological part is, as it turns out, the, the heroine in my book, Dr. Frida, has worked with another scientist and not just to invent age decoding, but they've also in, uh, have been working on addictive behavior and some psychological things and found a lot there. But one thing they discovered was that you can dampen people's critical facilities. They call it the propensity to dissent, to disagree with something. You could call it critical faculties. But anyway, they find that there's certain genes that can be tampered with, which would dampen that quite a lot. So sort of turn people into not zombies, but uh, very obedient and you know, not, not very critical of the government or corporations. So, of course, my heroine doesn't want that to happen. So she, in fact, she's nervous about the age decoding. She thinks that that's not going to be all the bowl of cherries either, just stopping aging. So the authority that wants to implement age decoding and is thinking about <laughs> adding in this psychological thing, clipping the propensity to dissent, she's she's nervous about them and they're nervous about her. So they what they do is they entrap her they fake her suicide and they take her underground for two centuries. They want her mind still, but they they want everybody else to think that she killed herself. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's quite an intriguing proposition. Well, Mark, I'd love to turn to the creative process in developing. You shared with me in our notes for the podcast that you wrote this over probably 10 years. You know, so what started as a little bit of personal research turned into legitimate pursuit of research, which turned into a story. What was the flow and process that you went through to develop this story? Right. So I went at it wholeheartedly about 10 years ago, and it took about a year to craft the novel and get a couple of people to look at it, review it and whatnot. And then I presented it to, I, I took the traditional publishing route where I sent it to New York Publishers Toronto, and I did not have any success. It seemed impossible to get anyone to read even one chapter 
of it. I reached out to agents and publishers and I guess it's just a very competitive market and I'm a first time author. So I, I sort of understood that. I put it on the back shelf for a while and then I returned to it about two years ago, sort of when COVID hit, I had more time. I retired recently from all my teaching. So it was a wonderful time to sort of take another look at it. I freshened up all the science because a lot has happened in that time, in that decade. Mm -hmm. It's almost good For that sure. it's coming out now instead of 10. In a way, there's serendipity there that it was delayed because I think it's really burst onto the scene now. And the Nobel Prize was awarded to, mm -hmm. to female scientists for that area just two years ago. So the CRISPR technology is advanced. Genetic engineering is almost full throttle now. It's definitely on the doorstep, this tsunami that's going to happen. So I, I updated the science. I actually, another thing for your listeners, if they're writers, I got more people to read parts of it or the whole thing. So I even paid a couple of editors, to, you know, a few hundred dollars to take a good hard look at it and give me honest feedback. And then I had a couple of friends look it over and give me all their suggestions. I really recommend that. That, that can lead to a lot of improvement. It's tough, but it's uh, it's worth it. Another thing that's changed in the last decade is self-publishing is much easier. So I just directly went that route. I didn't even think of sending out query letters or anything. So here I am. It's just come out a few months ago, and I'm really happy about it. You know? Yes. Well, let's pause on having people read it. I've also experienced that myself, but also I, I've had a lot of people say a, a fresh pair of eyes, if nothing else. But to have other professional writers say, let's take a look at this for what both flow and continuity and style and I mean not just editing but like does this make sense to a reader is that what right, you exactly. experienced exactly not just editing I I had one person who was a science fiction buff like a real science fiction guy that was I chose him in particular because he could provide that perspective and then I had one person who is a very artistic person like very good with people very seems very innately connected to different people the arts community he does theater and various things and, and I, I just I, I really respect this person so I had him look at it too and then I had a couple of other friends who who do a lot of reading, not necessarily sci-fi, look at it. And even my wife and my daughter helped with some editing. They found a lot of those little things that you just don't see. Even You can go googly-eyed looking at a sentence you've written, but you're still not going to see that. There's two thes back to back in there. You know, because just, yes. <laughs> you know. So with all that combination, that was another few months of work. I really was able to improve. I added several new chapters. I cut out a few chapters. So bye-bye all that hard work, but you just cut it right out, throw it right out the window. Got it to a point where you know, I'm pretty proud of it and it's fairly well crafted. That's exciting. And I think people are also interested always to look over the shoulder of someone else's creative process when you talk about self-publishing. What were some of the steps and even obstacles you had to overcome in terms of uh, layout or publication or now that it's out, you know, marketing the book? Yeah. So when you're self-published, you're depending primarily on yourself for your marketing. Another thing that has changed big time in the last 10 years is podcasts are much more viable while well, they've exploded, right? That's been a great tool, especially since you can't necessarily go to bookstores with COVID and do book signings and talk. So that virtual connection with people all across the world, like yourself, who did a great job with these podcasts, that, that's awesome. And then I also do some social media things, not a lot, but some. And then I have run a couple of advertisements and it's fun trying to craft an ad too and see how it works on whether it's on Facebook or Amazon right now I've got a little Facebook ad I put out there once in a while just so it's, it's a combination of all those things it's great it keeps you involved there's no doubt about that yeah uh, it's, a, it's not a done for you uh, proposition no. is it no, <laughs> so, uh, there's a bit of a flurry at the beginning yeah. with all your friends and all that. Bio, yeah, I was right? going to say, that... you know, listeners, this is an audio only podcast, so you can't see the large staff of promotional people all behind Mark in his office there. <laughs> That's right. That's right, like zero, right? Yeah, as in crickets back there. Sometimes it's lonely. <laughs> Not even my pet is going to help me, you know. Now, what process. about, I guess, now that you've finished the book, you've published it, now that the creative artist in you has been sort of stimulated and awakened, do you feel like there's another story and another angle or continuation, a sequel, or a whole nother direction for a book in you? 
Yeah. Well, I'm assuming we're not going to live forever, and that drives. That's one of the nice things about dying. I was going to say you're not going to wait until. I mean, (laughs) no, I'm not. Like a hundred years, two hundred years in the future, so we can't wait. That urgency, that that urgency (laughs) keeps you keeps you driven. If if I knew I was going to live till I'm a thousand years old, I would never have written a book in the first place. I don't think so. Uh, So anyway, no. There's a well. I'm also an artist. I've gotten into acrylic art in the last probably. 12 or 15, 14 years so uh, I'm doing some art shows here my wife taught art and she's an artist too so we, we sort of do that hobby together and it's a lot of fun and then I am going to try a sequel I'm working on a non-fiction book on running and training and coaching right now so that'll probably be my next publication uh, but I would love to do a sequel to the sci-fi book age decoded as well that's very exciting folks my guest has been mark ryle he's in hamilton ontario canada we've been talking about his book age decoded and we want to keep following your work mark so uh, how can we connect with you yeah so the best thing to do would be amazon or apple or whatever retailer you choose cora is a good forum to find out a little bit more about me i'm quite a presence on cora i've enjoyed answering a lot of questions a lot of my answers are humorous actually and some of them have to do with science fiction or genetic engineering but most of them are on other lots of discussion there about golf which is a quite a sport and lots of humor helps in that sport yeah. or shopping shopping at ikea that's one of my famous <laughs> answers <laughs> you might have got to read that one if you want to get dizzy read that answer but anyway so if they go to mark ryle cora you'll see uh, i've written probably another book right there of answers on various things had a lot of fun with that very Uh, good well i can definitely sense that like i said the creative spark you know when somebody first starts and says he taught math and uh, sciences uh i i'm sure they didn't expect the kind of humor and you know even fiction creative writing uh, that you've been able to share with us today well thanks very much and uh, thanks to the listeners and stay stay open-minded like you just never know you know i think teaching really helped me because i hung around a lot of young people the last 30 years and i think it kept me open and young and trying different things and it's really inspiring to be with uh, young people thanks very much for having me on your show mark yeah it's great advice and great insight thanks for sharing your experiences so again my guest mark ryle author of the book age decoded well listeners come back again next time we're going to continue our around the world journeys as we talk to creative artists professionals and practitioners literally around the world and find out how they get inspired how they organize those ideas, and then how they make the connections and get the confidence to launch their work out into the world. And that's what our podcast is all about. So until next time, I'm Mark Stenson, and we've been unlocking your world of creativity. Take care. Unlocking your world of creativity with best-selling author and brand innovator, Mark Stinson. This program was produced by BSB Media, creators of IntelliKey Leadership Stories, Unlocking Your World of Creativity, and thepeaceroom.love. We've created a special offer just for listeners of the podcast. You can get the book, A World of Creativity, for a special price of $5.98 for paperback. And the Kindle version is only 99 cents. Go to mark-stinson.com to take advantage of this special offer. Our podcast is supported by Adobe and the Adobe Creative Cloud, the world's best creative app and services so you can make almost anything you can imagine wherever you're inspired we use adobe to help make this podcast using audition premiere rush indesign and more so join the creative community with the adobe creative cloud and let's make something better unlocking your world of creativity